stories, as the fallen angel, right? He's the guy who is able to say sort of no to the divine plan. I've got my own idea for humanity. And so this was a specific kind of a turn that manifests in our uh, form as temptations, as uh, desires to do things, as self-aggrandizement, egotism. Uh, the thing that is exemplified very well in, in Smith in the second movie is copying himself in this big fight. And he copies someone, and he shows up again. There he is. Again. And he says, me, me, me. Right? <laughs> it's all me. And how does that happen? It happens through this jab to the heart, spreads this mirror substance over them, and this mirror substance is literally a reflection of what Smith sees. What does he want to see? Himself, right? So he's, all, he's out to see himself in everybody and have all of the power to do that. Well, he still, he goes through another transformation when he ends up picking up, he tra- takes over the body of one of the good guys in the Matrix. And, you know, they go through the phones, right? The phone rings... And he goes and picks up the phone as Smith slash this guy named Bane. And he goes in and incarnates into a physical body as Bane. Right? That's how the second one closes. So now we have Smith slash Bane, who is now in the physical world. And Neo has to deal with him in both worlds. Right? And he's simultaneously in a way. So Neo, in the, in the third movie, encounters this being as Bane, and what happens? Bane blinds him, right? He gets this electrical thing and blinds him. And suddenly Neo is blind. Well, this is a, what actually, as is always the case, spiritually, the things that these beings are trying to do end up helping us in the end for our own transformation. So Bane, blinding Neo, actually grants him spiritual sight. So here, in the first movie, Neo is looking at the green code of the Matrix through his imagination. That changes to where in the third movie, he's not seeing green code anymore. He's at another level. He's seeing the gold underlying essence of these beings. So it's not code, it's not represented in form of pictures. It's the actual things, the actual beings themselves in their spiritual form. That's why they're beings of light. So he sees that, he's granted that through his interaction with Lucifer as Bane, and he sees then Bane, right, as a fiery being. He's literally built out of flames, but his glasses, his sunglasses, are dark, right? Because you can't see behind, that's what he is, he's an image. It's an outer, it's an outer surface. And he can't see behind the sunglasses until, through the final transformation, He's able to penetrate the being of Smith from the inside out, and what's the first thing that happens is the eyes start glowing, right? Behind the sunglasses. So this is affecting the transformation of Neo and with Smith in a sort of de facto way through the end. So, well, there's a lot more, but I'm not going to, this will be, this is enough for now. And if you want to know more, so I, I mentioned I did write a, a paper. I'd be, I'd be happy to send it to anyone if you want. Um, you can email me. Yahoo.com. That's my email. So I can send it on over. Um, and you know, it's very interesting. I was flying to my grandmother's 80th birthday a few weekends ago, and on the plane on my iPod. Um, I had a test episode uh, done by PBS that you'd be pretty amazed. So I'm going to write this down here so you can go to this website. pbs.org slash science. And in there they have an episode, I believe it is something about, something about the 22nd century. So they're doing, they did three episodes, three different science programs we're trying to figure out which one to air. This one in particular has some things that are directly bearing on some of the aspects of the sort of the real matrix as it people are trying to implement. So watch that episode if you're interested because it'll be pretty uh, stunned, I think. 
So yes, I would like to uh, maybe open it up for questions and comments. And you know, this is just my interpretation. This is I certainly don't think is the only way to think about it. And I'd be happy to, to hear what other people have things to add and say. That'd be great. So thank you. <coughs> questions? Well, at the end of the third movie, Leo defeats Smith and then he dies, right? Like he's lying there? Like that's, that? Yes, that's correct. Certain, he does, in a certain way, die. But you also remember at the very end, there is indication by the oracle that Neo is not gone. And in fact, where is he? He is represented in a certain way by the sunset that Sati, that Indian girl, makes. And she's a very important figure for understanding where Neo is now. <laughs> yeah. Do the creators of the Matrix trilogy ever explain themselves what they mean by these films? In fact, they're very careful not to, um, which is good because in that sense there is no right answer. Mm -hmm. So this is an answer that I, I like to work with, and I've read many other answers. Um, for example, I read uh, a significant work that deals with this from a Vedanta perspective. Mm -hmm. perspective. I read a work that deals explicitly from a Christian perspective, and so forth. And they're not necessarily wrong. I'm, I'm just dealing with the particularly spiritual scientific aspects. They want to question the dragons, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, since Thomas Anderson is uh, Christ in the beginning in the first movie, that isn't it also like Christ was resurrected, and isn't he, it's kind of like he is also resurrected. And if this also Trinity is uh, feeling, couldn't she also be like Mary Magdalene? There are more, there is more there beneath the surface, yes. Every character has multiple meanings, definitely. That kind of leads into my question, which is what's the significance of the reference to the Merovingian and Zion, and is there yes. a real connection? There is. That, so some people know the name Merovingian because it's the line of the French kings from whom the bloodline of Jesus Christ is supposed to be still alive. That sort of thing. There's a lot of books on that. Um, my interpretation of the Merovingian goes along with that of Persephone, and it has to do with the way in which these programs are actually representatives of not the being of Lucifer, but actually a different type of being, an harmonic type of being. And that kind of a being whose figurehead is the architect, in a certain way, as this figure of Armand. And they are they are interested in the etheric body of the human, let's just say that. Yeah, Alex. Do you um, see that uh, in the first movie or um, in the whole trilogy that Plato's allegory of the cave is reflected on either just the first one or do you see it as um, reflected through the whole movie? Yeah, very clear. And that's the kind of thing we know the Wachowski brothers... They're very widely read. They read a lot of uh, Gnostic literature. You might know, see, they opened the book of Baudrillard, a modern philosopher. The Desert of the Real is his phrase. Um, and yes, Plato's Cave is an, sort of an explicit aspect of the movies that is part of the allegory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, coming, in, coming into the light, the light of knowledge. I would argue it's mostly in the first movie where that, that takes place. Yeah. Thanks. When Neo is visiting the architect, he mentions something about already being there. That's, yes. He's got like a hundred screens up on the wall of different versions of Neo. Um, I found that scene completely confusing uh, with the architect's dialogue. It didn't explain that much to me, other than the choice that he had to make. Yeah, that dialogue is very fascinating. I had to watch, actually, I actually had to get the transcript to be very clear about what's happening there. And, yes, there in that scene, there are these alternate versions of Neo, sort of potential paths that Neo could be traveling. And the architect is, you know, he, he's a Stephen Hawking type of figure, right? He sits in a chair and does this, right? He, he, that's what his limitation of movement is. He's, in, he's entirely in another realm, right? And he's presenting Neo with the logic of the situation, with, the, with all of these aspects which are connected with precision, right? His whole job is to design the matrix with precision, and he designed it perfectly the first time.